Hello and welcome back and that's right finally the storage upgrade slot on the PS5 looks like it's about to be activated. Sony issued that the beta software for its PlayStation 5 console is now out there and people can join up for the beta service and maybe get a chance to get an access to it. I don't have it yet unfortunately but hopefully I will very very shortly and they have detailed the kind of SSDs that are going to be supported by that upgrade slot. So for those that have been following this channel for a while you will know that this is very very much in my wheelhouse um, the ssds that are going to be supported unsurprisingly are pcie uh, gen 4 m2 ssds we have already have a bunch of them here um, on top of that these are going to support from 250 gig all the way up to 4 tb currently only two brands have got 4 tb drives out there of that full capacity that is seagate's fire 530 series a uh, uh, an SSD we're still waiting to get here in the studio. These are the 520s. Do not buy the 520s. You want the 530. And, of course, the um, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. We're just getting geared up for a review on those uh, any moment now. That should be going live in the next few days. But they are the only 4TB drive there, out there. And now, in terms of performance, Sony have said that the SSDs have to have minimum a reported benchmark of 5,500 megabytes per second sequential read. Now, that really does narrow down the pack somewhat. And of course, I'm going to detail recommendations for SSDs very, very shortly. And I'm going to unbox this as well. But it's worth talking about the size of SSDs as well. Because the majority of M2 NVMe uh, PCIe Gen 4 SSDs in the market right now that um, are available in up to 2TB are pretty much all going to arrive at the same length. They're going to arrive at 2280 length in SSD. And at first you're thinking, who cares about size? That thing's absolutely tiny. Well, the reason size is a factor is some of the more aggressively um, comprised and aggressively performing M2 NVMEs are recommended that you utilize heat sinks. These are large metal panels that go on top of the SSD and these dissipate the enormous amount of heat that's generated by the NAND on these individual SSDs. I've done lots of videos on that. I do recommend you check that out. Now, the SSD heat sinks, the majority of heat sinks are going to fit. That's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to open this up and show you. Um, and again, I don't have the SSD update available in this video. I will shortly. I just wanted to give you guys a physical demonstration of exactly how it's going to run. But before I do that, I'm sure you're watching this video wondering, what are the SSDs that I recommend? What are the ones that will work? Well, the first one, I've already touched on it, a massive one there, the Seagate Fire CUDA 530. It's arriving in a few capacities all the way up to 4TB. It's currently not released yet. Uh, it looks like at least in the UK regions, it's gonna be released in the first week of August. Different regions around the world, uh, and stock is gonna be thin on the ground, I'll be perfectly honest. So if you are thinking of going for that, it's the highest performing one out there, with the, uh, the Fizon controller. That's gonna be the most expensive SSD, but it is the highest performing SSD in the market right now. Now, on top of that, you've also got an SSD that's been around for a great deal longer, and that is the Samsung 980, the Pro Series there. This is readily available and a bit more affordable. The performance isn't as high up there on right. It does have a benchmark at read, sequential read at 7,000 megabytes per second, but you gotta make sure you go for the larger capacities if you're gonna go for one of those. Now, I've already touched on it earlier, but the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus series. These are pretty high performing SSDs. They're arriving with that Fizon controller. They've got 96 layer NAND. I don't expect you to know what that means, but long story short, it means that the Sabrent is an SSD that's been around for a while, and it's one of the few SSDs that's available to buy right now that has the performance threshold for PlayStation 5. Now, again, when we're going through all these different options, do not think that all M2 NVMEs are built equal. They're just not. There's going to be SATA ones that are not the same. Also, you've got to make sure you go for an SSD that is PCIe Gen 4. You see that at the bottom there? Gen 4. If it's not a Gen 4 times 4 SSD, you're wasting your money and your time. But more appropriately, even if they're Gen 4, Gen 4 SSDs have arrived in two generations so far. And the first gen, the majority of them are not going to be suitable. There are um, a few more SSDs to discuss. Um, there is, of course, the one that we've talked about already on the channel, the WD Black SN850. 
but it's worth remembering that that SSD is actually one of the lower performing ones in terms of write. And I'm not prepared to 100% commit that that is compatible quite yet. I think it is, but I'm going to wait until I've physically got one here in the studio and I've done bench testing to see if that SSD is going to work. The other two are ones that we're still waiting for as consumers. One of them is from MSI and that's the M480 a Spatium series that we talked about a few weeks ago. That SSD has got more than enough benchmarks, uh, ratings in terms of uh, read, write, additional IOPS and more that that is going to perform on the PS5. And finally, it is the A Data Gamix. It's one of the few SSDs I've not talked about here on the channel, hence why I had to look at my notes. And that is another one, if you can get hold of it, that may be right for you. But just remember, it's gotta be an M2 NVMe SSD, a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. If you can go better, make sure you're going for a revision 1.3 or revision 1.4 NVMe SSD. I've done lots of guides on this already and make sure it has a reported sequential read in excess of 5,500 megs. But I would strongly recommend for going for some of the SSDs like the Sabrent, like the Fire CUDA 530, like that MSI that have got performance benchmarks there that are in excess of 6,000 because that's really where you want to live in modern gaming down the line. Now, I know I've already done this on the channel, but if you do want to access the slot that's on site on this, the side that does not have the PS logo, this is the side you want to get to. You lay it down and the top of the panel will slide off. Let's get that off of there. That's what I get for having a slippery table. Let's pop that there. So we've got that panel off. And as you can see inside there, that is the panel we are looking for. That one right there. It's a little cross head screwdriver there. It is quite a small screwdriver head there. So you will need quite a delicate screwdriver to get into it. Have a look there. Getting that screw out of there will reveal the M2 NVMe slot. Let's get that out of there. We remove the screw. We're gonna need that for later. Removes the panel. And once again, there is our M2 NVMe slot. Now, on here, we then get our SSD. There should be a screw already inside that you can utilize for your screws moving forward. So you're gonna to need to remove that little embedded screw there. Let's get that out of there. And from there, you can see that it's actually a little bit more shallow than we like. Now, to put that into perspective there, remember, this is our big heat sink here, this giant heat sink. So when we put that in, we would install that there with the SSD inside. And straight away, you can see that that is not gonna fit. That is just way too big for what we're trying to do there. Now, maybe we can utilize that slot without that covering panel, and we only utilize it with that cooler. However, will the lid go on? Yes, it does. Nevertheless, even though we've got a very good understanding about what are the NVMEs that are currently supported by the PS5, again, ranging from the Samsung 980 to the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, and of course, the Fire CUDA 530. Again, that is my heavy recommendation there for an SSD on these systems. But until that update is fully live, I would not recommend utilizing beta software on your PS5 at the moment. Normally the betas on PS5 system software are quite short, and I do think this is one that's gonna go by quite quickly, so don't rely on that update as your core system running, but I will install it on mine, and then bench test a load of SSDs for you guys to give you some idea, one, about what are the SSDs that work and which ones don't, and ultimately, which ones can be higher performing in the games that we love. But thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. There is a link in the description to NAS Compares, where I have broken down not only the installation for this, but I have gone through and recommended all of those SSDs that we've gone through today. I've listed them by the most recommended performance, recommended uh, endurance and longevity. There's lots of details down there, so I do recommend that you check that out. And I have listed every single SSD that I believe will be compatible with that slot when that software update goes from beta to full. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you did, subscribe to learn more. And again, I will be bench testing a lot of SSDs in the next few weeks. So subscribe if you want to see all of those different tests and help you decide what's the best SSD for your PS5 upgrade. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.